Hi, I'm glad you're here. This is Mitch, Dr. Kayak. Uh, just wanted to talk about oh, what I've been talking about lately. Uh, uh, but there's going to be a little bit of a spin on it here. So check me out on the goods. When the first astronauts stepped out of the LEM, or what is known as the Lunar Excursion Module, on July 20th, 1969, I was seven years old. As it did most Americans, it caught every bit of my attention. They actually launched a spaceship and landed it on another astral body, an orb with no atmosphere, neither flora nor fauna, and completely uninhabited. Basically a big ball of soft space dust with no redeeming quality. And they're planning to do it again. So here I am contemplating how I might survive living out of my own EEM or <laughs> earthly excursion module. Stepping out of it, I will be faced with gravity and air and flora as well as fauna. On the big dust ball, there was nowhere to plug in. The LEM had 228 to 32 volt, 296 amp hour silver zinc batteries weighing in at a total of 250 pounds with no way to recharge them. Can you imagine? Here I am wondering how I'm going to survive with plenty of air and lightweight batteries with a few hundred watts of solar panels. Not to mention shore power, air conditioning, a cord that will extend from my earthly excursion module to an AC power source. From Earth, they communicated with the astronauts on one to three watts of transmitting power. Now we can upload YouTube videos and talk to anyone around the world on our little handheld Star Trek communicators. Prior to the launch of Apollo 11 back in 1969, there were hundreds if not thousands of people involved in getting these people on the lunar surface in hopes that they would be able to get them back home safely. Now we just need a vehicle big enough to haul one person to wherever it is they may want to go. One person. And I'm sitting here wondering if I'll be able to do it. We make things more difficult than we need to. All you need to do is get a truck and a camper. Get rid of all the earth junk you've accumulated over the years. Get on board and launch. Go. That's right, go. Go where? Well, if that's your biggest concern, then don't go. Look, you have plenty of air. And when you step out of your earthly excursion module, there's plenty of gravity, so you won't have to worry about floating off into space. Finding water won't be that difficult either. As I understand it, there's more water than land on this orb. What about money? Well, to put things into perspective, to get Apollo 11 to the moon, it cost about $152 billion in today's dollars. Depending how you choose to do your travel, you could spend a couple of thousand bucks and you should be able to get on the road. Another thing to consider is you can find a job just about anywhere on this planet. Good luck finding a gig on the moon. In fact, I'm wondering about how stupid mankind can be thinking it's a good idea to build a moon base. The USSR was the first to impact the moon, followed by the United States, China, and India. By 2030, there's a long list of countries planning to go. Israel, Africa, Japan, South Korea, Sweden, Turkey, and Ukraine, just to name a few. So basically, we're going to inhabit two orbs and then fight over whose territory is whose. Can you imagine how incredibly ignorant mankind truly is? From there, we will surely screw up Mars as well. I have a feeling that we'll all be dead by then, so I really need to focus on getting my nomad life underway. I'll see you on the road. Okay. <laughs>